Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. In today's episode, we're covering yesterday's White House press briefing where Philip Wegman of Real Clear Politics smacks Jake Sullivan right upside his head with a phenomenal question. And then we have Fox News reporter Peter Ducey ending Corrine Jean Pierre's career with a line of questioning. As always, folks, this is one you are not going to want to miss. Support us by hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below and also share this video with your friends and family. Without further ado, here's Philip Wegman going up against Jake Sullivan. Let's roll it. Last question. Um, um, given that you said bolstering the World Bank is not about countering China, in this country, credit card delinquencies have spiked, mortgage rates are through the roof, inflation remains a problem. Meanwhile, the federal deficit this year has almost tripled, and the president wants to increase uh, funding to foreign nations through the World Bank. How is that fair to citizen in, say, Scranton? Look, I think citizens in Scranton recognize that problems that happen overseas don't stay overseas. They come here, too, at great cost to working people. COVID came here from overseas. Uh, when there's massive debt or instability or conflict elsewhere, it has a drag on the global economy, and America is part of the global economy. So f our perspective is that for a modest investment from the point of view of the overall size of the U.S. budget, to put into ensuring greater stability, greater prosperity, greater capacity in the rest of the world, that is going to end up reducing the costs and burdens on working people in Scranton or Minneapolis or any of all, your all's hometowns. And frankly, that's not some novel idea. That has been a bipartisan commitment of the United States for decades. And even the last administration, the biggest skeptic of all of this, made investments in foreign aid because those investments are in the naked self-interest of the United States as well as being the right thing to do. Thank Folks, this is wild messaging. It's so out there. Let's just, can we just really quickly before we move into the Peter Ducey segment, just kind of break this down very simply in terms of your own personal finances. You're looking at it. You got no money. You decide, hey, you know what? I'm in debt. I don't got any money. None whatsoever. But let me just take a modest investment and put it into, say, a new vehicle that depreciates up the wazoo. That's a little bit of a knucklehead move, and that's exactly what this guy's saying. And he's going, not only are you buying a vehicle that you can't afford in no way, shape, or form, you got no money whatsoever. You can barely feed yourself, but you're also going to be better off for it. <laughs> It's so wild. We're $33 trillion in debt. And this guy's like, it's a modest investment. It's a modest investment. All the shenanigans that are going through the roof, like your gas prices, like inflation, your grocery bill, people, people can't afford their mortgages. Some of them are defaulting. I mean, you name it, it's going on and you're better off for it. It's so wild. It's insane. As if we don't have eyes to see and ears to hear. Oh, gosh. It's wild. It is so insane. And like I said, you guys, people eat it up. They're all about it. They believe everything that comes out of this administration's mouth. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> all you can do is laugh because it's so outlandish. Well, that's Philip Wegman of Real Clear Politics. The guy's amazing. Head over to Real Clear Politics and show the man some love. Now, we got the man, the myth, the legend, Fox News reporter Peter Ducey. Destroying Kareem here on a lot of questions. This man gets some serious airtime here and just listen to her responses. I hope you're buckled up, ready to go, because this is fun. Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below if you haven't already. Without further ado, here's the gladiator. Thank you, Kareem. President Biden is the oldest president in U.S. history. Why does White House staff treat him like a baby? No one treats the president of the United States, the commander in chief, uh, like a baby. So there's this book that says that's ridiculous. When staff it's a ridiculous back claim. What sounded like a call for regime change in Russia, the president, uh, quote, rather than owning his failure, he fumed to friends about how he was treated like a toddler. Was John Kennedy ever babied like that? So look, uh, I'll say this: um, there's going to be a range, always a range of books uh, that are uh, about every administration, as you know. Uh, that's going to have a variety of claims. That is not unusual. That happens all the time. And we're not going to litigate those here. That's something that we're not going to uh, speak to. There is one thing that I do want to, because I think. 
But the thing is, is that not only is his own administration come out and talk about how they treat him like a baby. You guys, when you have a toddler running around your house, you watch it at all times to make sure it doesn't run into a corner or a lamp post or the bed frame or doesn't hit its head on the corner of things. His own White House aides came out and said they are terrified that this guy is going to trip over a cable like a camera cable on the floor or that he trips or stubs his toe on the rug and falls over and breaks a hip. This is not an exaggeration. This is, this is coming from them. I might've added a little bit of him tripping over the rug, but the core thing was totally legit. That one was real. This is a guy that they can't get out of bed. I mean, they had to decrease his working hours. He's been on vacation almost 50% of his presidency. That's a real number. This guy only works between noon and 4 p.m. They can't get him out of nap time. So yes, they are treating him like a toddler. He shuffles his feet. He gets lost like a toddler does. He can't, he, he literally talks like a baby. If you think about it, he fumbles through his words and you're trying to piece together like what he's talking about. Did he like do to his diapy? And you're trying to like, do you need to be cleaned? Like you're trying to, you know, morph and figure out what the hell he's talking about. Of course, this is 100% makes sense. It 100% makes sense. I was asked this question last week by one of your colleagues about this particular excerpt uh, that they uh, were referring to. And so I'll say this, you know, we did see the excerpt, excerpt go, the context uh, of the excerpt, and it seemed to be making the opposite overall point about how the value of his experience and wisdom resulted in rallying the free world against authoritarianism, which is important. We have seen this, you all have seen this, and passage of the most historic agenda in recent history in his handling of foreign policy, like rallying the world around Ukraine, as you just heard from our national- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. I'm trying to keep it together. People think I'm making this up, but holy crap. Really, the foreign policy? You, and you're going to bring up Ukraine when you send billions of dollars to Ukraine and nothing to Maui? I mean, he was on the beaches of Delaware, feet in the sand, not a care in the world about the people of Hawaii. It's sending billions, hundreds of billion dollars to Ukraine. Oh, God, but he cares about you. Oh, it's so good. Security, national security advisor who laid out in really good questions that your colleagues asked about how the president is moving forward, about Ukraine, uh, about kind of leading into these conversations that he's going to be having at the G20. Why do you think it is that in a Wall Street Journal poll, two thirds of Democrats think President Biden is too old to run again? Look, here's what I know. Here's what I can speak to. I can speak to that a president who has wisdom, I can speak to a president who has experience. I can speak to a president who has done uh, historic, has taken historic action and has delivered in historic pieces of legislation. And that's important. When the last guy who was in this, uh, in the Oval Office uh, talked about infrastructure uh, week, it was a joke. And the president passed a pretty important piece of legislation in a bipartisan way because of his wisdom, because of his experience. And now we have uh, infrastructure decade. And it doesn't stop there. It starts last week. We talked about how the president beat big pharma, something that elected officials and politicians have been trying to do for 33 years. And he's been able to do that. And we introduced 10. So Joe Biden spends trillions of dollars on infrastructure. And, and let me know in the comment section. I live in California. The only infrastructure that I'm seeing done is through my own tax money on a state level because they increased the gas tax. And finally, finally, we're actually seeing some road repairs. That hasn't happened in my lifetime. I'm not seeing all this stuff. You have train derailment after train derailment all the time. What infrastructure? Somebody let me know. Are they actually building a bridge near you? Like that's on a federal level? Like, can somebody just let us know in the comment section? Furthermore, all this idea of them, well, we beat big pharma. Okay. <laughs> like, you're all paying up the wazoo for gas, grocery bills, inflation's through the roof. Wages are down, even though they're going to say that they're up. Mortgage rates are through the roof. I mean, I was looking recently, houses are going for like 1.2 million in Southern California with a mortgage interest rate of like 6.6%. Like, who the hell can afford a house like that? But don't worry, Joe Biden has everything figured out. You are better off now than you were under Trump. Does anybody believe that? And even if you're a Democrat, Democrats don't even believe that. Come on. And she's going to sell you on this?
And the first tranche, the, f the first 10 uh, drugs that Medicare can now negotiate on, right? And it's going to save money for our seniors, for Americans across the country. The, the gentleman that introduced the president, Stephen, who's 71 years old, paying $16,000 a month, $16,000 a month just to stay alive because he had cancer and diabetes. And he cannot retire because he's because he has to pay sixteen thousand dollars a month. And because of the work that this president has done, he doesn't have to sixteen thousand dollars a month. Who in here that follows the bald Brad show makes sixteen thousand dollars a month? And if you are, why are you not a member? <laughs> Am I not right? Why are you not buying our merch and helping us out here? Sixteen thousand dollars a month? What do you do for a living? do that anymore and i'll say one last thing i know you have a follow-up probably about five more but let me just say this one last thing is that the interesting thing about this is that the president has done these historic pieces of legislation whether it's the bipartisan infrastructure legislation whether it's the american rescue plan whether it's chips and science act uh, whether it's the Infl inflation reduction act there are some republicans right in the house in the senate that did not vote for any of these legislations that i good good Let's make sure we highlight those Republicans that realize we're $33 trillion in debt. We don't have the money for all this stuff. And let's keep them elected. Just laid out who go back to their state, go back to their district and take credit for something that the president did. So this is not unusual. They did this in 2019. They did this in 2020. And the, they did this in 2022. And the president continues to prevail. Okay, just one more. The president sure. said over the long weekend that he hasn't had the occasion to go to East Palestine. I just haven't been able to break. The derailment was on February 3rd. President Biden has not had a break since February 3rd. The president will go to East Palestine. He promised that he would, and he will. Uh, you saw him. On, uh, so he was not on a break when he was in Lake Tahoe? I will say this again. The president is going to go to East Palestine, as he has said that he is committed to do. You saw him just this Saturday visit uh, a rural area, right, that was uh, devastated. Some parts were devastated by. Gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. He was in Tahoe. He was on the beaches of Delaware, feet in the sand, raking in the rays of the sunshine while Maui was on fire. The guy has had months and months to go to East Palestine and he hasn't done it because he's terrible at his job, folks. This is wild. This is wild. She's been she's been saying, oh, well, he's going to go when. And then he says, oh, well, I, I was on a break. I, I just didn't I didn't have a break, but I was on a break. Look, if that makes sense to you, explain it to the rest of us in the comment section, because we would love your wisdom and knowledge that's been bestowed upon you to somehow reach a level of understanding and intellect that none of us else can reach. I, I didn't have a break, but I was on break multiple times. The dude's been on break 40 to almost 50% of his presidency. Almost 50%. He's in the 40 percentile in terms of being on vacation, but he didn't have time to go to East Palestine. But he's had time to go to Ukraine. He's had time to go to Delaware. He's had time to go to Ireland. Like he's had all these other things to do, all these other places. But yet actually see American citizens. Uh, he was almost dragged to Maui. He went like like a week later. And then they lied about it. Oh, people love him there. I mean, the response time was impeccable. They were flipping him off in his motorcade. They were telling him to go home. Don't give me this of like, he cares. He Don't give me it. Don't give me it. Uh, Hurricane Idalia, and he was there with the first lady. They were able to hear directly from the American people. And he was able to talk about what is it that they need? What is it? What else do they need from the federal government? So the president is going to go to East Palestine. I don't have a time or, or date to announce at this time, but he will go. Okay. It's February. We're in September now, but hey, I don't have a time or date, but he'll make it at some point. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure he will. Sure he will. Well, uh, those were the pretty much the highlights. We love our boys, Philip Wegman, as well as Peter Ducey. They are both our gladiators. The boys are back in town doing yeoman's work, speaking on behalf of the American people and getting good questions out there, folks. Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below. Please share this video with your friends and family. And also head over to baldbrad.com. We got merchandise. We also have a book called Trojan Horse, How the Left is Destroying America, written by yours truly. We'd love your support on purchasing that book. You can get it on Amazon or Barnes & Nobles. With that being said, folks, I'll see you tomorrow here on The Bald Brad Show.